Dylan, are you ready for our third installment of Lex Luger? Have you done the Luger diet? That's right. Nothing but steroids and looking at your girlfriend going, you're going to see the truth. You're going to meet Ooh, God. Yeah, the Lex Luger diet I'm on right now, which is you almost achieve something, so your son fucking has to. That's right. That's right. Dylan God. Well, is... I guess your son also doesn't achieve that thing. Yeah, I think it's underrated about the Lex Luger story. Luger's an interesting one in that it does seem like his toxicity was able to skip his kids, which... Ooh, well, that's, that's what happens when you are on the road all the time and your wife just raises them and you're like, this is for the best. I yeah, provided exactly. the height and she provided the absolutely everything else. I guarantee that his wife, when she found out You've been having an, uh, he was having an affair with Miss Elizabeth. I guarantee he was like, I'm so sorry. And she was like, yeah, I know, Lou, uh, Lex, your excuses were like, I have to go sleep over at another woman's house who I'm having sex with. <laughs> All right. I'm Dylan God, of course. That is John Hastings. We I'm are talking John Hastings. About Lex we are Luger, both Lex three. Luger's ex-wives' sons. The NWO till the O-O-W-O. Oh, wow. Good for you. Yes, Dylan. So let's talk about Lex Luger, I think, was the greatest person. He was, besides he was Sting. the greatest person. He was the greatest person. I love the way he approached Mentally his abusive, personal life. Physically, physically abusive. abusive. He checks all the boxes. Exactly. Ripped. That, remember, yeah. if you're pretty, you can Swole, get away with everything. Jacked, Swole. Mentally abusive. Cool. That's yeah, five. Yeah, that's right. That's the rest, the rest of the review five. <laughs> Swole and Jack count for two. Also, Lex Luger... Never, I will say this about the man. Yes, he did pills. Yes, he did steroids. That's right. But this like guy, the host of a podcast even at I his know. lowest point, was like, is there breading on that chicken? Exactly. Get true. it the fuck out of my face. Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, are you having garlic bread? I am. Uh, can you open your mouth so I can throw up in it? <laughs> I guarantee this guy went to a KFC and he was like, uh, hey, can I have a bucket of chicken? But can you just give me the chicken? Because I actually have a working oven in my car that I will bake it in. Um, Jim Cornette talks about eating in front of Jim Co or in front of Lex Luger in the 90s and literally turned him and went package. When's the last time you had a cheeseburger? And he was like, I had some French fries about seven months ago. And he was like, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard in my life. And that's coming from Jim Cornette, who has heard this phrase. Uh, Jim, your wife is tired from me fucking her. Yep, that's right. She gets tired from that. I just think that Jim Cornette probably is like, it was the craziest thing I've ever seen. Anyway, here's a normal thing I see. Man eats a dog not without cooking it. Yeah, that's exactly right. I guarantee that Jim Cornette, like he watches the outtakes of Jack. He watched Jim Cornette loves Jackass, but he also thinks Jackass is the footage of Ryan Dunn drunk driving, careening into a wall and <laughs> bursting into flame. Yeah, he calls Jackass normal. Yeah, he calls Jack. He thinks Jackass is the Faces of Death VHS from when we were fourteen. That that one kid that always wore in black and you never saw after grade nine. He really was into. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you know the crazy thing is of something I think about all the time that will literally come out of left field here and uh, Go ahead. classic welcome, wrestler review. We decided to, to start on topic, tease you guys a bit that we're going to stay of course, on topic yeah, and then go hard off topic. Exactly. Well, we will circle we back because I now. want I want to talk about how stupid they make Lex Luger look as the good guy in this storyline. Yes. Well, we will talk about that because I think it's 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 much like a good dip, layered. Uh, Pantera, do you know? Did you ever have the watch the Pantera home videos? Oh, of course. He's the, the bus tweet. driver. So the Pantera home videos, if you think about it, and this is literally nine people who will sit for a combined. I think it was like four hours of just literally it's home videos. It's like here's the, some stunts okay, we did. There was a time when music, when music, everything in music just cost twenty dollars. Mm -hmm. Every band put out so much weird merch. Pantera, quite famously, that you'd always get like collections of their music videos you could just watch. But then Pantera, it's the model wrestling now has where it's like, oh yeah, we have a fourth as many fans as like whatever popular song is but our our fans will spend a hundred dollars a person your fan will spend 20 for the cd that's it that's right like you have to understand like bear in mind like the band that sings cody rhodes's theme song is financially booned by him walking out to that screamo treat yes. also will osprey song i have never heard a song more horrible that is stuck right that's in my head is worse no, the the Will Osprey like ba -da 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 and I remember thinking be like that's going in my head and I hate it and it's for two days. It's between that and a David Crosby song called um what are their names? It's been a real soup in my head. Go ahead, Dylan. Ooh, I, I'm sad. Anyway, Pantera Vulgar Videos what had a guy just driving right into like a steel garage yeah, or a did. steel grated door where it's if like I believe oh, he it also, killed himself. I Full also speed. think Rex Brown is drinking in the back seat of that car during that video. Yeah. yeah. So it had Jackass. <laughs> 
Yep. So that's one part of what TikTok is. Then it had legit, just for some reason, they popped their security guard cyst on his ass. That's another part of the internet. Yep. And then it had like huge jugs and dudes just saying fucking buck wild shit, which is now podcast. You can and just also, watch the internet. Way, it, had, it had Phil and Salmo just probably being like a secret racist. So that's politics. It's like that, public. It, I mean, it wasn't. It's true. At that and there time. was a heavy racist undertone that you could just scrape off and then you could just ignore, which we we did until I couldn't anymore. <laughs> so I got to tell you, I still I will put on walk once in a great while on a run, which is ironic. Uh, but I still am like, oh, damn it. This this guy does. This guy does not believe in the rights of Michael Jordan. And yet he is still he one of the great it. ones. Well, and then I, I had a shirt that was the, it was funny because it was the smallest Confederate flag I could find. on a This Pantera is the thing shirt. with Pantera that we really should have always. It, confederate flag there's like it's like a snake holding a guitar and you're like there's no fucking confederate flag in here and then the smallest thing in the corner is a guy with a confederate flag giving a thumbs up yeah like, yeah and his, <laughs> and his t-shirt reads i know what this flag means and that's why i like it um <laughs> nashville Pussy, i want to the line you... notes on one of their albums has a guy wearing a shirt with a confederate flag and it says if at first you don't succeed try try again god damn it um would you like to know how i relate this back to lex luger are you ready? I can do it. I just wanna, I just wanna be along for the ride. I don't care how it gets there. All right. Uh, much like Pantera, Lex Luger, when Lex Luger was part of the death of Miss Elizabeth and involved in drugs, I remember being like, "What?" But he's so healthy looking, and he has a ponytail. Mm -hmm. Like I remember, this was his fall from grace was such a shock because of basically how he was presented versus the NWO. In that, the way Pantera was always presented is like these scrappy guys live in a garage. And they like to drink a little bit of Al Keyhole. And Lex yeah. Luger's is like, he's a muscly man who just believes in the traditions of wrestling. And that's why he cannot stand for the NWO. And you're like, yeah, that's right. I bet you that's true. Like, that's sort of how they presented him. He was just like, he's a chipper young upstart athlete who's in his 40s. And don't ask him what he does in his personal life because that is his business. And he'll be taking against going up against the reprehensible Brian Adams of well, the NWO. The thing about Lex Luger is long hair Lex Luger. Oh, yeah. Let's party. Short hair, Lex Luger in the WWF and later times WCW, and of course, he never had. When did he? Ever, oh, he did very briefly have like the weird quiff short hair when they started putting a logo on his trunks, and they did that weird pose down at the beginning of it. Mm -hmm. There was then. Oh yeah, he had short hair in the WWF for some reason. Um, I, I probably just because he looked too much. He was too much like. Describe it would have been Hogan, too, not look like Hogan. Exactly. Course, but... He's a jack guy with long blonde hair. It's like, so Hulk Hogan? It's like, no. So now it's like, he's a jack guy with short blonde hair and an American flag on his butt. And he loves America just all out. But the other thing, uh, what I wanted to get to was uh, his face is ugly. And the more of his face shows, the more you're like, oh, yeah, that guy does weird shit. But the long hair, you're like, ooh, long hair. See, I don't. I see what you're saying, but I disagree. I do not find him ugly. I find him very handsome. Classically. Look at. Lex Luger from TNA. Also, I watched classic things. Okay, first of all, no why are you watching they Lex were, Luger in TNA? They were in TNA. Admit, Somehow, of course. Bruiser Brody was in TNA. <laughs> Dylan, we appeared in TNA. <laughs> I, I we're the commentators. everyone listening to this just tries to remember something That's about Dixie Carter calling Dylan right now being you like, You were in um, TNA. That is Dutch Mantel calling because he's trying to rebook me for Impact Wrestling. No, what's very exciting about Dutch, Dutch Mantel is that he's now just doing an inner a podcast that he thinks is a shoot interview on the internet with this weird British kid who like clearly just bought a bunch. Of, I love it so much. I love wrestlers' ability to be like, "What is that? You know how to do something? Let me be a part of it and get money from it." It's like if every comedian you know had the a great third for this, honestly, and I mean this from the bottom of my Dutch heart, Mantel, the honky tonk man. Oh my god, do you know? Because how he good would just flat out not be? listen to what we were saying. There'd be a separate audio track going. As much as we talk over each other, he'd talk over us the entire time. We'd cut out his audio track, and then when we paused, we would just he would just say things. He'd be like, I'll tell you the best thing about Aubrey. It's fucking all the girls and the cooks. And then he'd be like, uh, all right. Uh, so Honky Talk, man, what's the best thing about Lex Luger? Let me tell you the best thing about Lex Luger. He one time gave me a bag of panties. Didn't even tell me where they were from, but they were covered in peanut butter. <laughs> I invented oatmeal when I took a shit from my cock. They call it cum. I call it oatmeal. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hey, did you know that if you're a wrestler, you just get a car for free? You just if you break the glass, you take it. Honky Tonk Man. Let me say this about the Honky Tonk Man. Is there any? I think the Honky Tonk Man's post wrestling career could best be defined as he looked in the mirror and he went, "I'm gonna give him the wrestler that they always thought was out there." And it's just a it's a yeah. guy drinking weird beers in clothes that makes no sense. You'd be wearing. Why are you wearing a? Why are you shirtless except for a Patagonia fleece you've ripped the tag off of in shorts? 
What do you, what I, was the plan here? Man is to I'm prepared for any environment. To, uh, wrestlers, what Glitter Glitter is to pedophilic musicians, which is they're all kind of pedophiles, but even pedophiles have to be like, that guy's a fucking pedophile. That's very funny. Yeah, David Bowie, who dated a lot of 13-year-olds, was like, yeah, but I'm not Gary. I'm not this creep. You know what I mean? Whoa. At least they have the embiotic fluid off them when I date them. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cut the cord. That ruins the freshness, Gary Glitter. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> I didn't care for that at all. I will, let me just, oh, la, la. Um, I am jealous of your filthy animals t-shirt every Thank time you. I see it. I, uh, that's it's what I'm saying so about good. the $100 per person. I bought an off-brand filthy animal shirt because why not? If you don't think that I also get those Instagram and then targeted ads. my mom got ads, me a golf hat too. And she said, this will be your summer hat. And I was like, mother, you've never said anything that's more appropriate in your goddamn life. You know, this and I, my and this is something you guys don't know about Dylan Gott. In the same way we did not know that Lex Luger loves pills, but we should have known is that Dylan Gott loves an outfit. He loves it. He loves it. He coordinates traveling with him. He has a road case like a vaudevillian and he steps in it to show out his little show outfits. I remember we were in Timmins once and he did a little spin in front of the holiday and do I look like a fancy boy? Dylan said. Um, so Lex Timmins, Luger. Ontario, I will say this before we get to Lex Luger, the most racist thing I've ever heard said, which was as follows. Go ahead. The guy said, yeah, it's good around here. But there's a lot of spruce N-words, which he meant indigenous people. Of course. And then uh, there was a pause, and he said, we tried out saying alpine N-words, but it wasn't as catchy. Which means, I guess in Timmins, they just have a town hall meeting. It's like, and now we try out slurs? <laughs> anyway... Alpine and words. I will never. I was not in That's Timmins, not Ontario, catchy. but I was very close when I refused a beer and I was asked, "You don't want a beer? What are you Jewish?" I'll never, mm -hmm. uh, uh, never forget it. See, I don't even comprehend that as being racist because the place I was some from was so racist. It's like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't make any sense with any stereotype. You're like, what? It it was for free. Like it would, it would be if I took it. Then that would play into your weird racist stereotype, That's racist man. I took you know, one hit off a joint once at a college in. Uh, Northern Ontario, and a guy was like, "We finish our fucking bowls here," and I was like, "That's cool. I don't live here," and I left. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the moment you realize that you're no longer in the small town in Canada you grew up in, and that their small town bullies can't intimidate you if they're not like, "What are you gonna do?" We'll beat you up by the fence. You're like, "I'm gonna drive back to Toronto in my car," and I'm they're 34. like, "Like, ah, oh, shit." <laughs> I'm 34 and I own a Yaris. I don't know why, but first I've of all, Dylan, on you Yaris are not as 34. The, you are 36. The the fucking... Yeah, but you I was are... 34 at the time. Uh, Pre-pandemic, of course. For, right in the middle of it. So I asked like me to it. share a joint with him while there was no fucking vaccine. I was like, what the fuck are you... Like, what you want? If I was going to cheat on my wife, it wouldn't be sucking a joint back with a fucking nine-year-old bitch. Yeah, exactly. I was doing an elementary school fundraiser. All right, so jo John Hastings, we got Lex Luger in the NWO. We've already fucking so Lex, torched so 13 minutes of these people's time. And, and I enjoyed think it. Lex enjoyed Luger in the minute. NWO, one of the most unsung... Interesting parts in uh, wrestling history, John. I completely agree. Lex Luger is the straw that stirs the drink in this scenario in that he is somehow, he's basically the unbeatable, you beat him all the time uh, baby face in the NWO. The NWO was very interesting in that they actually drew from a very small amount of talent in which they were constantly feuding with. The cruiserweights were never really involved with it as like no one really in the lower mid card, lower mid card or low, like down on the card at the bottom, the opening matches. Were, had nothing to do with the NWO. They were literally there so that the commentators could talk over them. Lex Luger was their perennial target. He was attacked all the time. He barely ever got any offense in, and yet still you were like, this is exciting. It's exciting that he's going down to the ring to lose. Like, like There was something about him that was re it worked really, really well as can... this guy. Is It was basically just he was in the original Outsiders versus WCW3 representatives. He was injured very early on with it, which was, by the way, the original booking in case he needed to be the Hogan was the reason why they did that. Then they took him out. He came back um, at Hogwild. They did a tag match between um, the Outsiders. Was it was Sting. I thought you said it was Sting instead of Hogan, but that was he was the guy who was like, if Hogan at the last second decides not to do this, which I think is just bullshit. Hogan was always going to do it. But See, no, I do not think Hogan's going to do it. Because we now, this has been like corroborated by everyone. It's like Bischoff, Kevin Sullivan, and Hogan all say Hogan's agent was there. And Hogan's agent was like, do not do this. This is a terrible idea. Bischoff was very much for it. Kevin Sullivan was very much for it. Anyone with wrestling knowledge was clearly for it because they were like, listen, this is just classic territory stuff. You've been on top of wrestling. If wrestling was a territory, you've been on top of the wrestling territory for 15 years. 
essentially. Also, there's something to be said about just flat out taking a year off of, like, even if it was just a year and he turned on the NWO again, you've now yeah. spicy spiced it up. But this um, is the thing is the NWO would have been one of the greatest examples of storytelling if they ended it when they were supposed to, which was Sting triumphantly winning the belt and the NWO is gone. Yeah, gone for a while before Nash comes back as one of the outsiders, or you keep one. Like, there's there's definitely things that you can do. The people um, who have the belts would be fun to are talk about that we won't talk about here. Are protected. That's how you do it. Anyway, Luger going through all of this, this is a very interesting, because there's a tale of two cities to this. Luger is just the perennial guy they kick the shit out of. If you watch any NWO running, it's either a Luger match, Luger runs in. He's Kane. He's Kane. It's very He's interesting. better Kane because... This is during an era, and I think the reason why you can keep Luger is two things that people don't do anymore. First things first, he always was winning jo against jobbers. So it's like even if he loses to the NWO and gets the shit pushed in of his dick and then his dick falls yeah, off, he's that's true. still 9-1 and one in his last 10 matches, if you look at it that way. That's such a the funny, amazing point. The second thing is that yeah, he go never ahead. fucking sold for anybody, really. and. When you have a guy who just like basically, oh my god, that's loses, such a great point. And people don't do that anymore. Everyone sells for everyone, but it's like you kind of need someone like the Undertaker, who's like, I sell for these two guys. That's fucking it. Yeah, it's the thing of. I think that we will get that as uh, as now as I I believe like you know as Cody gets older and becomes this like it looks like he's becoming the fucking yeah. Like, Cody is like Cody's the, face. the guy who's going to introduce a lot of things that people complain about. <laughs> on the internet in the 90s which really makes me feel old but like when i started listening to wrestling podcasts like this not podcasts but like literally <laughs> you have to tune oh in my like god 2 a.m because that's when they let the nerds have the fucking station yeah you have to turn on the, the radio ratings. yeah but they wouldn't be able to sell ads because they're like this is all 13 year olds i will never forget listening to there was a radio blowers. show on that they tried out for a week in ottawa and it was a wrestling radio show very late at night at like it was late at night. I was like 12 or whatever. Whenever the end of you had to wake up for school, it was a Sunday and it was the hot. They, they literally just did a, like a, the, the review of the, of the hog wild match, which was uh, Bischoff versus Leno. And they did it in such an intellectual dissection. Like they were like, I mean, I cannot believe that they let Jay wrestle. And I was like, you guys know this is fake, right? Like I'm 12. You, I should, you should know that this is fake. Anyway, the wrestling podcast used to be amazing. And what Dylan is absolutely getting at is bringing back all of that sort of stuff of like not selling for anyone, big power moves. Like essentially Although what Cody Rhodes still does do every single match. He's trying to do every single match as a classic. And it's like sometimes you just fucking steamroll a guy. And part of wrestling is you want that combat sports. Because this is the thing about Lex I'm going to say this, and this is actually bringing back to Lex Luger's. I see your point in that. Cody Rhodes needs a little bit of what Larry Fole had, which was Larry Fole didn't think he was a star, but he's like, I'm an athlete. I'm better than this. Treat me with some respect. And he Cody absolutely thought he was a star. Yeah. But in the way that Cody also thinks he's a star, but Cody's like, I'm a wrestling star. Like Lex Luger's like, I'm not, I'm not getting hit by you. You know what I mean? Like they, he needs this a little, real, no, he needs a little of that. Adam page needs a little of that. The stupid young bucks with their weird, like, friend who seems like they're keeping a sex sub as their valet that would be a very good addition is that they, they fuck him after they win or lose they would, they would never, never go better. they would never do it because the, but the, the, the what i do love quietly about aw that i and this is just my suspicion is it's like let me tell you one you want to get some real heat in the aw uh, locker room grab a mic and go joe biden won the election i guarantee the young bucks are like <laughs> i got some information like a aj styles would appear in the crowd and be like i disagree my friend <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about. I think the young bucks stay out of things because I, I don't know. I, I don't think that those guys think politically. I think they I think they think do. And here's why: is because I've lived in California long enough that if someone has long hair and is balding in California, watch the fuck out. That's like that's like you think he's that's like morphing into Hogan. That's the exactly. That's right. The young bucks have been known to look at each other's wives and go, "Let's give each other the gawker." Um, our sisters, technically. Yes, exactly. Our sister wives, Nick. And he's like, what? And he's like, that's right. Sister-in-law, sister in deposit. Bone. Sister in cock. Uh, so, sister in cock. And oh, Luger, sister. obviously, is the first draft of this, which you need a dude who you can beat repeatedly. Oh, my God. Do the they NWO beat the shit over, over? But then also, people still see as a threat, and that's who Lex Luger is. He's perfect for this role. He's absolutely perfect for beat the fucking shit out of him a ton of time. And it's this weird thing where it's like, if you book... 
So WWE tries to do this, which I think... So basically, obviously, the way if you watch the UFC or boxing, the way they always promote every single UFC in boxing is our champion's going to face this greatest test. Even if you know the dude was just pushing yeah. the title shot, even if you know it's like an off month and they just like, okay, well, this guy can fight this month. Who cares? We'll just push this guy. It's always the greatest test he's ever had, or this is an interesting test. But WW, sorry, WCW and what WWE has tried to do is um, more like a round table real sports discussions, which is this guy never has realized his potential. Is he going to? Yeah. And Lex I don't Luger know is, if that works, but that's an interesting but, thing for Lex you, Luger. You, it's like, here's a guy who's always almost been the guy. Is he going to beat Hulk Hogan and become the guy? Is he going to surpass Sting? And that's such a really interesting... I completely agree. What was also very interesting is how they would always do it is it was sort of like there is the Sting factor. Mm -hmm. It's also like anytime he was facing one member of the NWO, they could also be like, but there's eight other guys. He's had the problem with six. He's in the ring now against Scott Hall. It was a very interesting... Lex Luger's career in the NWO time is like, do you want to build the best Tito Santana you've ever seen in wrestling? That's why I find it. Do you know what I'm saying? No. Yes, because it's literally he's not really like Tito Santana is so much better at every everything listen, other than just on, the mirror. On, Tito on, Santana on, is so much better at everything else. Because, but what wrestling. I'm saying is, he is literally he's a Lex Luger is exactly. This was my reaction to a Lex Luger match during the NWO era. All right. Like you're not like it's he the thing you're not putting he into somehow his, moves fast without moving his back at all. You're exactly, and you're never, never ever moving his back. You never think of Lex. You would never buy a pay per view to see if to see Lex Luger go for the WCW title. And how to prove that theory is they had to have Hogan lose to sell pay per view buys mm -hmm. to see if Luger can retain the title. And that's ex sort of what you'd have to do with Tito Santana because you'd be like. You'd have to be like, Tito Santana beat Hulk Hogan. And you'd be like, what are you fucking talking about? And he's like, yeah. And they're having a rematch. You'd be like, I'm going to watch that rematch. Because, like, it, like I assume, like, you kind of are like, well, Hogan's going to win. But is, like, it creates that question of, like, are they going in a different direction? Like, to me, that that is, like, such an interesting thing where the only reason they do that is because they're competing against the WWF at the time. Because there's no way that should have happened that early in the mm, NWF. You're 100% correct. I'm, I'm massaging some of the information to prove my point. It, it was 100% a ratings decision. But, again, it only – it worked because it was Luger. Like, if you did it with yeah. the and big – And title changes didn't happen all that often back then. In WCW. In WCW, title changes – the world title never changed hands. It was Hogan – all day, every day, bye bye. Yeah, it's kind of like here's our strongest character, but they never like. I mean, we talked about this in the Hogan episode six hundred years ago, but they never like showed vulnerability for like a reason for why Hulk Hogan would turn heel. And then it's so it's kind of like, oh, here's our most powerful character, and now he's also a bad guy. And then Luger beats him, and you're like, holy shit, is Lex Luger gonna do it? Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely but, not. And the other thing about this is Lex Luger's win did serve one purpose which was they're telling the story of everyone in wcw has obviously been feuding for a million years now these guys are going to try and kill wcw yeah they're a small force but they're all really great and we can't get along so the whole locker room comes out and holds up lex luger and you think holy fuck is wcw going to work together and then it just devolves into infighting again. And like you said, it would have been the greatest story if they just would have ended it. Sting beats the NWO. The NWO has to expand. Or Sting beats Hogan, and then Hogan, to get another title shot, goes, hey, I'll, I need that title. I'll put up anything. And then, uh, this is so obvious, but, like, you know, then you do the four-on-four -four match in war games or whatever. Yeah. They lose. W NWO has to expand. That's how you do it. But Luger... And the part Luger was really a star in of the story, he really did shine in and was really, like, almost impeccably written beyond. Like, you couldn't do a better job. What is Did like Luger is... being like, yeah, sure, you're paying me? I'll fucking... Because this is the other thing. It's like, he knows that it, he has, he's on a low contract. He knows he has to be a team player. That's the other thing. Well, we don't know if he's on a low contract at this point. His contract was renegotiated once the NWO came in like Bischoff okay. started giving him a much better deal and he had a much better deal going forward. He because had to be like, you're jobbing every fucking week. So yeah. <laughs> like, and it's also, and it's also that thing of, it was a time where if WCW, like WWE bringing Luger back at a certain point could happen. Like you could bring like Lex Luger as Val mm -hmm. Venus. Do you understand how much Vince Rosso wanted to do that? Other than if you think about it, politics aside, Sean Morley is such a better performer than Lex Luger in every Oh my God. Way. It would also be, imagine, imagine Lex Luger's Val Venus. 
I um. Do you know intercourse? I did that with your wife. I uh, have a. What do I do? I. Uh, you want me to say that? <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. I have sex on tape. I don't even know yeah. what you call that. Hey. Call that. <laughs> hey, Taka, Taka. You know your sister that 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 is that guy's wife. My penis was in her vagina and it was wet like a lake. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Oh my God. The apoplectic porn star. So yeah, I don't nutted. understand why I can't eat catering. Why uh, while I'm filming this stuff, if I'm so close to the catering, I need. Uh, to, I eat every two hours. That's how I keep this looking like this. It doesn't make any sense that I would have sex with this woman because I'm not attracted to her. I like a really pretty face. Mm -hmm. If my wife sees this, she's gonna know I'm fucking around on her. Yeah, exactly. I don't care are if you, it's rolling. It's are you guys? Cancer. Are you guys prepared to pay for my divorce? Because I want you to know about Lex Luger the man versus Lex Luger the character. Both of them are cheating on a lot of people's wives, particularly my own. I'm in an eating window. I'm not filming a promo. <laughs> Next up on Raw. Yeah. <laughs> Lex Luger and a PA have a very heated discussion over text message. Yeah. Well, I think it's inappropriate. You couldn't just bring some macadamia nuts to set. That's all. I, I just wanted a high protein nut. Rice, you fucking idiot. Yeah, no, exactly. You I'm want me to bloat? I'm not bloating. It's not fucking an off month, you stupid fuck. Yeah. Do you know anything about the fucking body? Do you know anything? This is the interesting Do you know what goes about, in my um... mouth? Do you know what goes in my mouth? Meat. Here's how he gets his title shot. Uh, Go ahead. Luger... Uh, because I want to get this right. Luger won a four corners match to become the number one contender. His new ally, the Giant. So it's him and the Giant beat Hulk Hogan and Dennis Rodman. And that's how you'd know Hogan was like, oh, a real oh, wrestler? that's no, right. I have he to beat have a handicap cause... of having a current basketball player. As that's right, because my... they did the Rodman, because Rodman was, it cost him the match at Uncensored. This is also the thing of they. Whenever Hog like Luger got beat, he got beat in like the most spectacular. Like Lex Luger lost the match because Evil Knievel jumped the ring in a motorcycle, shit on Lex's face. The acid because it was diarrhea burned his mouth and eyes, and he was pinned by Scott Norton. <laughs> but this is the thing about Hogan during this period too. It's like he plays the chicken shit heel. This is what was so confusing as a kid. He would be like a chicken shit heel, but then he would just also just decide to win and then win. And I'd be like, why was he scared? He won. yeah, I agree. He just started winning. Very easy. It is the weird thing is that he never stopped hulking up, even though he yeah. was very much the bad guy. Well, because his agent probably was like, we're not losing the Hulk up, all right? Buddy? Yeah, baby, listen uh, listen up to me. You want to be Miss we, We're going to make Mr. Nanny too, but to make that happen, you got to Hulk up. How about this? Mrs. Nanny, you transition. That's going to be real good. <laughs> yeah. How about this? Yeah, you transition. Some of the fans will not be for it. I. What the greatest be. heel move of all time in wrestling? Yeah, that's right. Side with Disney against Ron, S Ron DeSantis. You're gonna First you're gonna all, you do come it. Out on the mic, you say Roe versus Wade is good. Then you announce the transitioning. <laughs> yeah, that's the you biggest really... move I've ever seen. Yeah, if you do that in uh, you do that in Macon, Georgia, I guarantee we're not getting out of there alive. Which Luckily, is why I will... Jim Cornette loves MJF so much. When MJF was like, "I'm Jewish," he's like, "Oh my God, he's he's even." Oh my God, he's the biggest. Heel. Oh my, what is he doing? He just this is bigger than what Hogan turned heel. He just this announced is the one he... of the, this is the greatest I've ever seen. He's well, this man doesn't religion. he understand he's about to perform in the South. No one's going to come. They'll send the fire department. <laughs> so this and also Luger kind of also is the best part and the worst part of the NWO angle because we all know what happens in Starcade, And then we all know that like basically yeah, 97 Starcade decides... happens. And then Luger is just around having matches with Scott Hall when Scott Hall is both the thinnest and the most bloaty he's ever been. And then. Then what happens to Lex Luger versus the NWO? This is when the, the no one talks about this part. He of the ruins NWO. the NWO because he's the biggest fucking nerd you've ever seen. Exactly, in your life. he is like and then literally. He's like, I've been the Wolf Pack, and you're yeah. like, hold up, the gym teachers hanging out with the cool kids. Fuck yeah, off. That's exactly correct. It's like, wait a minute, that guy's a narc, and it's like, yeah, narc who's on our side, and it's like, do you not understand what narcs are? You yeah. fucking cool goons? shitheads. For some reason, Buff Bagwell totally pulled off being a cool shithead because he's uh, a cool shithead. One. Scott Buff Norton worked for some reason. Because let me tell you why both of those people worked. Buff Bagwell, and they also were so smart in putting them together in that Scott Norton looks like the guy who's friends with the dick. Because he, he's like, listen. He looks like my... the bouncer. and He looks like the close-up on this guy's tough that every action hero beats up in every movie. When you've done, I've done the, like a fair amount of catering and a fair amount of working in the service industry. And this is a dynamic that's in a lot of bars and nightclubs, which is the really crazy bouncer. Um who has had a horrific life, like do not ask that guy about his personal life because you'd be like, I'll never forget when my dad bit my knuckle off. And then there was the one 
eventually me too bartender like the guy mm. where like people are like that guy's a bit of a creep and everyone's like yeah no shit like yeah no fucking shit he watches women gets drunk and that's when he goes for the one two three exactly those guys are very good friends and that was scott norton and buff bagwell like buff bagwell's that's like very that's very good like guy who talks shit and guy who fucking just yeah like scott do you want to see all this w- photos i took of women peeing and he's like no buff i have a wife but i'm glad to see you're exercising your har- hobby of photography <laughs> but honestly everyone needs a hobby and that's fine with me for some reason yeah. i only hang out with bad people so you're the best guy i know yeah you're literally the nicest person i know my other best friend uh keeps trying to steal my car it's a nissan pathfinder <laughs> and it is a quality automobile but but yeah lex luger joins in a way that's so boring it defies fucking reality the lex luger way he's he's che- somehow he figured out how to get the first blackberry so he's texting someone he shows them it and he goes oh hey uh can i join your fucking what's this called wolf dog party yeah i'm part of the dog guys i'm a dog bow bow wow do you know um do you know your wife's number yeah hey you're not home so i'm probably gonna go over there hey do you know if it's okay that i took a shit in your tub (laughs) i just didn't feel like using the toilet so someone that might have been me intentionally clogged with shower just so no one else could have a shower. I don't hey, it's fun. I don't know if I did this. So sometimes what I like to do is just call my kid's school and say I'm not going to pay for it anymore. <laughs> you got to move your car. That's a lot of the. A lot, oh a lot my of god! The yeah, you're right. Lex to, Luger hey, is not irritating. You move in, your car. It's too close a, to mine. It's not. A, I don't have to leave yet, but I'm going to want to leave. That's the thing. This is, Lex Luger is not a dick and like he's messing with his kids, but Lex Luger is such a fuck. Like he'd be like. In a restaurant, and be like, "Hey, son, one of you is chewing too loud. Can one of you just quit it with the chewing? It's just a bit. It's a bit much." Come on, man. Chew with it even more closed. Yeah, like just like actually fucking chew, you little fucking bitch. Sneakers. Yeah. Um, but yeah, NWO. Uh, the day the world changed, of course, May twenty fifth, nineteen ninety eight. Lex Luger joins the Wolfpack. Turns it's so into lame. NWO Wolfpack and NWO Hollywood. Even and then he convinces Sting. So it's kind of like, with the help of Lex Luger and Storyline, him and Sting, short-term gain, of course, because they sold a bunch of NWO merch, which is totally why they had the Wolfpack and the NWO. But like like you're saying, oh my like, God. even if you... The summer of 1998, everyone, everyone, everyone wanted the red and black. You're like, what? There's a cool... Basically, what they were like is, what if WCW was also the NWO? And so they just made NWO Wolfpack, and it was well, all the... Pr- I don't know this for certain, um, but I'm sure there's a million books written on it because this is the this is the most well documented period in world history, almost. By the wrestlers, because all the wrestlers yeah. were big into shoot interviews, because it's Kevin Nash, and Kevin Nash is the smartest of all wrestlers, being like, "You'll give me how much to do what? Yeah, 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 yeah." Like, wait a minute, yeah, bro. I can make three hundred bucks while I'm full eating, a hundred percent. Yeah, I'm wait a minute. You will buy me a full bottle of wine. Getting good wine, which will exactly cost more than three hundred. Yeah, I think you don't realize I will be showing up in shorts and a very lime green tank top, and I will be talking about booking in a way that makes everyone realize this guy was not paying attention when he had this job. <laughs> I feel like every single internet wrestling fan, including us, owes Kevin Nash an apology because he was in the 2000s being like, you guys are nerds, this is for nerds, and I was like, fuck you, Kevin Nash, and now it's 2022, and I look at my son's eyes and I say, Kevin Nash is right about everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I have told your wife a few, I'm actually glad you brought this up, I've been emailing her, not weekly, but bi-weekly, being like, you need to make sure that your son starts listening to Kevin Nash shoot interviews because he talks about, A, how to hit on girls, which is real cool. Um, it is one of the weirdest things ever, by the way, because it is a uh, be handsome shoot. and taller than them. Is that from one and two? It is. First of you all, shoot. you hang it's out with only creeps, so you save them from the creeps. First of all, yeah, exactly. Make sure you know Scott Hall and yeah. Randy Savage while they're drinking. Block Scott Steiner from talking to them. That's the, yeah. that's your open because Scott Steiner yeah. is gonna want to talk to them and exactly. he's gonna tell him not to. And also, like you do, and like Scott Steiner is gonna try out some of the things he's gonna want to say to them, mm-hmm. and you do not want to be there for that because that'll just be in your head. You got a wet cunt, and I want to wear it. Oh my god! If you want to add up IQ, here's my IQ. IQ want to cock you, bitch. <laughs> fuck you. Fuck hey. me in my ass. Oh hey, my you- dick. Hey, you want a fucking drink? Throws piss in her face. There's a fucking drink for my dick. Now suck you my dick. positive for my piss. Get over here and suck my dick all over my ass. 
It is so rare when we're both rested for an episode. I want everyone to know of the f- of the six I'm and a half. Not rested. I mean, yeah, but you're rested for like a father, and that like you're not like actively hurt right now. Yeah, I, I got straight sleep, but I was standing up like a horse at the time. Exactly, that's right. Like you got sleep, but it was in traffic while driving. <laughs> <laughs> oh my <horse>. god. <laughs> I almost fell into REM there. <laughs> okay, combined, I got an hour, but I was driving to Ottawa at the time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was. Done. Yeah, I just slept for two hours. I was performing stand-up comedy for one full hour of it. You know, this is such a throwaway joke, but you know, you're truly gone insane, insane from lack of sleep. When I watched that movie where um, Charlie's Theron and Seth Rogen are dating, and it's like he's ugly. How the fuck did he bang this old broad or whatever? And then she is a politician, so he walks into a room, and she's just got her eyes closed for a really long time, and then she opens them slowly, and she's like, he's like, oh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, like, thinking. She's like, oh, I was micro-napping. And then I didn't think, that's a joke. I thought, good good idea, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so Felix, I'll be like, uh, sorry, playing with my wallet, and I'll be like, this is a good time to get 30 seconds of sleep. Here's the thing I think done. about any time a friend of mine has a kid, which is when I was born, because uh, I was premature, there was a bunch of parts of my body that didn't work properly because they weren't supposed to exist for another three to four months. The main one is the stomach. So I had the bit like, this is the best, is farts would get trapped in my stomach and then expand my little baby stomach to the point of excruciating pain. Like I had a hardcore as a baby. That's mm. how fucking cool I was. And... uh my mom and doctors described that I just screamed full a full year. Unless I was being like motioned like this, I would sleep for maybe like two or three hours. I do not know how my mom didn't throw me into Lake Ontario and then just run into the woods. Like, that's great. Hey, you I mean, love no, this it's thing. Not. For one year, it will scream. Wait, what? Like the first, the first impression of me was me screaming in pain at my tired mother, and she was not like. Well, I know how to I know how to solve this fucking whiner. You know what well, I mean? Well, your mother is except an exceptional person. I don't think I've ever seen. No, there's no no one is more like no one she is more. A, uh, she brings oh my a two thousand dollar photography setup anytime John performs, and then John is like, "Can you please turn off the flash?" And she's like, "Well, now I have to tell all these lighting guys to go home." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that was because. <laughs> That is Dylan is referencing one time when my mom used the biggest flash during a stand-up comedy show, and it literally like a joke went off, and then a flash, and everyone went, ha, "What the fuck was that?" <laughs> I was sitting next to her, and I said, "Oh, he probably doesn't want you to do that." And she went, "Okay." Yep, that's uh, that <laughs> sounds like, exactly. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> my, my, no, here's the thing: is she'll never do it again. But in the moment, she's like, "Well, I, we already did it." Like this is this is right there. It's like You've you can't mess with. Yeah, you can't mess with baby boomers. They'll just do it. We did it. What do you want from me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ocean's full of garbage. Whatever. Swim in the garbage. Shut up. Yeah. Anyway, here's my favorite thing. He gets injured. Lex Luger does. Uh, he tours his bicep while he's at home. He starts drinking even more. His pill this is the funniest part, is too. Fucked. He's not hanging out with Sting because Sting goes, I'm not doing pills tonight. And then Lex Luger goes, oh, that's crazy. I got you a present sucked on my finger and my this dick This is the craziest ass. part is he stops being friends with Sting, according to his own admission, because he's like, let's do pills tonight like we do every night, Sting. And he's Isn't like, that fucking cr- like I've never so heard crazy. of an addict. I've heard of an addict being like, you know what? We are trapped. Maybe we should try together. And then they fall apart. They're like, I can't do it good luck on your journey or whatever but never a guy who's like "Ooh, pussy and yeah, then just it, keep, it, doesn't hang out with the other guy that's anymore. the thing is i've never heard it like one night only do you know what i'm saying like it's literally one night like it's literally like i don't want to party tonight and he's like oh well i've just been betrayed Fucking dick. but anyway he's, he's at home he gets even more into pills and uh his do- his eight-year-old daughter goes daddy i'm worried about your drinking so he calls her the beer police Ooh, beer police are here which is such a classic shitty parent I think Lex, thing to do. Lex Luger is the total package in that he is literally all of the bad dads I remember from elementary funny. school. Like I can literally see him just on – he's on a sofa in a living room that smells like cigarettes. But crucially, there are no visible cigarettes. And his daughter walks in. It is 9 in the morning. He is – drunk we are listening to some like classic drunk dad music frank zappa possibly the guess who you know what i mean and it's taking care of business and like he's just silently fist bumping maury's on the t yeah there it is right there exactly like not all the way tiny <laughs> fist yeah this is fucking dead you know how good. fucked it must be to get no attention from your parent but they're jacked 
Like it's one <laughs> thing when they're fat because it's like yeah, you oh, know you, just, you know they can try. You know that they spend two to three hours in the gym per day and they have a set diet, but they just have no time for you. They, yeah. they could cut it down to two hours at the gym and still be looking great, but they're like, I need that third hour. I can't yeah. read to you. Uh, hun, that's when I try and get one of the girls that work in the pro shop to suck my dick. <laughs> I don't your teachers you will not do that. Your teachers won't do that. History. I got news for you about your fucking slut kindergarten t-shirt. She gave you an A, and I thought that entitled me to getting rimmed in the library. Mm -hmm. Turns out I'm not allowed to show up at that school anymore. Yeah, she gave you got an A, and I got her V on my D. A ba boom. <laughs> Dylan, uh, it's a real shame you're not Italian because you could really sexual harass some people on the street with your intellect. I do, and I still. Dylan Gotti has arrived. Uh, oh, is Dylan Gotti package. coming back? Oh. <laughs> The total package, Dylan Gotti? So we get the total package and Lex Luger by his own admission, which is crazy because he doesn't look that good during this period comparatively. I mean, compared to me, look good lord. But like compared to him in 19... Like he rem he has eyes that remember who he was in 1987. But 1999, Lex Luger thinks he's so jacked, he literally is just staring at himself in the mirror and he says that... He changes his name from Lex Luger in storyline to just the total package, which is such an interesting, like, Vince. Yes. I guess Vince McMahon would have called him Luger and not Lex Luger <clears throat> now, but. Oh, my God, yeah. Well, if he'd been in the Attitude Era, like, Lord knows. Like, he would, like, Lex, let me, let me tell Dr. you this. Come. He would have been Dr. Come, the gay bodybuilder, and it would have oh. been not oh. written up and glad. You need some cum. Yeah. Oh, my. Let's come on him. Just the new blood dropping blood oh, onto the oof. into the ring, but it's come. Yeah, that yeah, would exactly. Load. Um, I want you to know that's very interesting about the new podcast setup is I'm doing it in the same general area as someone who's working a real job, and it's very weird to hear the click the, the clicky clack of keys while we're just like, call me Doctor Come. I'm just gonna do some work of screaming at my friend. Literally, words you've never. Yeah, I. Like, uh... This is the thing about wrestling, where someone, anytime someone who doesn't listen to wrestling or isn't that aware of wrestling, is like, "Oh, I'll listen to like a wrestling podcast with you," and I'm like, "I couldn't imagine you understanding what's happening." It's it's a different language. Like, it's not only we talk about wrestling, we talk about it in such a bizarre way, where it's like. <sighs> I'll never forget watching the main event of SummerSlam 2014 with the guy who invented Setlist, Troy Conrad, who's really big into MMA. So he knew who Brock Lesnar was. So he's like, oh, Brock Lesnar, I'll watch this. And he sits down and John Cena came out. And he's like, first of all, why doesn't John Cena care about this match? And I was like, what are you talking about? He's wearing shorts. That's not something an athlete does. He, I thought he cared about this. And I was like, that's such a funny takeaway. And by the way, I agree with you now. Like, yeah, Brock Lesnar's wearing boots and shorts. He's come prepared for a match. And then Brock Lesnar proceeded to beat the shit out of John Cena. And Troy, like, knowing knowing that, it, knowing that it was fake, was like, this makes a lot of sense. If, you, if, I sh if someone... If I was Brock Lesnar and someone showed up for a match in shorts, this is what I would do to him. And I was like, this is the most legitimate and honest and beautiful reaction to wrestling I've ever seen. And no one. That is the only time a non-wrestling fan has watched wrestling and not walked away like, I am upset by this. That's so interesting. I mean, there is things about wrestling that do hit home. And in an attempt at a segue... Every single person who watched wrestling as a kid remembers Lex Luger because he had the most porn starry name, which I think I touched on. But they, yeah, like, he did. Every sing, everyone, people were like, "Oh, Bret Hart's cool," but they remembered Yokozuna and Lex Luger because Lex Luger had such a like. His name is literally almost sex. Yeah. He's got the I think I think. Many Can I also say this? this? But Can I say two this? Gimmick names. Lex Luger is essentially like it, the closest to Captain America ever. Yokozuna looks like a like just a villain. He's just especially in yeah. the 90s when so many villains were just on Saturday morning cartoons were just fat guys sat in a chair. Get them. Like that's exactly it. And then Bret Hart is just the guy your grandma paint to paint the shed. Like Captain America, the Thanos, Thanos Hawkeye's friend. Like not even Hawkeye. The guy who helps make he does the does look like a secondary superhero who gets beat up, so Lex Luger has to save him. Exactly. Like, and he looks like he's a real goof. Like Bret Hart but, but, looks. But I think the key thing about that, though, the key thing, we're we're going backwards. The key thing why Lex Luger didn't work is because even in professional wrestling and even in storytelling, full stop. The thing Captain America had, and this is such a subtle thing, is like brown hair, like. Lex Luger is blonde hair, blue eyed, like literally 
if the Nazis won, you would have just changed the flag and he would have been the same fucking character. So I, I completely agree. It's basically because Captain America also starts as a weakling and he had something had to mm. change within him externally to make him Lex this Luger way. Was like, I'm dope and I'm still dope. Yeah, Lux Luger will never acknowledge the secret, so, the super soldier serum that gave him his PRs. Well, we're going to have to talk about it now because I think a team that is underrated but only really because I completely agree with the you. time it's, sucks so, was totally buff. Now, so Lex Luger, in- we, we skirted over this, but he had had a few with Buff Bag all where it's basically like, I'm jacked and I'm a nice guy. I'm jacked and I'm a bad guy. Totally. And then they finally are like, wait a minute. I think I've realized I'm jacked and I'm a bad guy and that rules. Double high five. Yeah, so um, basically what happened is they have the New Blood and Millionaires Club, which is Eric Bischoff and uh, Vince Russo take over the booking together. They're coming back to reset WCW. They literally take a week off show highlight clips of when wcw ruled is what they literally promoted as they come back like remember that nitro where they come out and they're like none of the titles so they reset reset all of the titles which is like just take a month and just that's the laziest thing i've ever seen it's so fucking lazy um and in this time lex luger and buff feud vince russo is eventually sent home then eric bischoff is sent home and then it's just the company's run by i don't know some fucking guy who's stupid kevin sullivan and a boat they go into the mail room and say you're on yeah they point they point at kevin nash and they go do you want to do it and he's like i do not anyway so he um um so it's in this period where the booking is just random and wild and things are constantly shifting and changing so many storylines are not resolved and one of the things we get is the tag team totally buff which is really really good and what they needed was jimmy hart in the 90s bobby the brain he they needed a shithead manager and what's crazy is WCW had both of those guys and didn't think to be like, Bobby, you're super injured and we don't want you on commentary anymore because the disdain you have for Tony Schiavone is audible to the listener. How about we fly you in for one taping? We're taping all the shows and you walk out twice with totally buff and leave. How do you feel about that? Yeah. Like that was the problem with Totally Buff. Instead, they had Miss Elizabeth. By the way, this is when Miss Elizabeth and Lex Luger have started having a affair. I can only imagine Randy Savage is beside himself at this point because he's like, I told you. I told you this whole time, you stay in the closet. And the first time you stay in the closet, what is it? You decide using your own brain to date someone. How dare you, Liz? Yeah, that was he literally Metro's made her stay in the closet thought. for hours until he could convince his son to get takeout. Oh, so yeah, we're not we're not there yet. So then what happens is is basically Lex and his son start sharing an a, an apartment because uh Lex's son is attending a fancy school in Atlanta that is uh far away from their house. So he gets a secret house where he hangs out and does drugs and drinks and has sex with Miss Elizabeth Hewlett. And then one time his son comes home early and he has to spend 3 hours while she's hidden in the closet getting him to go get takeout. Dude, I have such literal respect for people that cheat on their wives. This is so crazy. You know this what, behavior. It, but have you talked about? Sorry, because I got uh, some text messages. I pulled a real, uh, real Hastings. Um, you certainly did. <laughs> so, have you discussed yet the fact that um, he was like got caught by his wife on Valentine's Day? So this is the thing I was about important. to say. So he then gets caught by his wife on Valentine's Day because uh, I'll change. I'll change. And then what he does instead of changing is. Gets Miss Elizabeth another phone. And buys a secret townhouse that his family doesn't know. He buys, he has a secret mortgage. How shitty is your life? You're like, don't tell, hey, bank how, manager. How, this is the dying days of just being able to disappear by driving two hours. Yeah, 100%. This is good Social God. media has ruined the fact of like guys with families in two different like, it has not. It would be no, no, an no, amazing no, no, podcast no. to just talk to people if they would talk honestly, which they wouldn't, because guys who do that are obviously terrible people and pathological liars and sociopaths. But you like, can get just them. Talk to I guarantee a guy you can get them. Different families that are like one's an hour drive away from the other. I am fascinated by those guys for this reason right here. You have to. You have to buy two of everything because that would drive me insane. Because you can't. So funny. You can't. Where? Yeah, only Greek guys could do that. They must just. You gotta have spendthrift people. Yeah, I could if there definitely. Was a man, if there was a man who was I'm uh, thinking Caucasian of someone in your who life. did that, like just fucking grew up, you know, not grew up, but like his lineage is Scottish or Middle English, like myself, I'd be like, who raised you? Your um, money. I know some. I, we know some. We know someone whose whose parent was this. We know someone who was the second family. Really? Yeah. 
And their name and was? Buff Dylan Bagwell. God. What did you say who the name was? Buff Bagwell. It was Buff Bagwell. I'm putting the name in the private chat, and I want you all to know that Dylan is not going to be shocked when he reads it. He's going to be like, oh, okay, yeah, so, watch this. Lex Luger, Buff Bagwell, totally buff. Lex Luger, unfortunately, has gone full insane. Buff Bagwell also, I think at this point, has fake quads. Like, they are oh, he has fake a great quads. He's got the they biggest are a hat. great tag team because they are who they are. Like, they are not, this is not a character. This is I completely just, they agree. Are who they are. I also think that what is amazing about this time period is they are, name one opponent for them. This is when, by the way, WCW booking is literally like, ah, oh, these are the characters. I don't fucking know. Like, you have to understand, there's the Magnificent Seven. Like, the, the dying days of WCW, it's very interesting because we've all expected. They just play a bunch of Seven Samurai for, like, they're like, yeah, there's a what's full, this fucking movie? There's an entire Nitro that is just the Young Dragons talking about Dale Earnhardt. Like, it's so fucking crazy. Yeah, the Young Tank Dragons come out, and then they just, like, do a bunch of racial stereotypes, which is sick. And then Vince Russo comes like, bro, this is good. Bro, it's perfect. It's transgressive. It's like the movie Matrix, which I have not seen, it, but my son told me about. My son told me uh, that's just how they act, bro. Um. So, yeah, it's basically the dying days of WCW happen. Uh, Lex... Loves pills. Elizabeth seems to also enjoy them, and he decides to beat her up a bunch. Go on, Lex, drink some vodka, be a terrible person. Yeah, uh, what's pill interesting heads about this? Smacking each other around, and he complains about how, oh god, it's like I'd shove her, and then the fucking whole police department will be there. They, are they pro and then he's like, they probably oh just wanted to hang out with me. Which you is are not fucking exaggerating. Insane. How infuriating no, Lex. They thought you oh were going to fucking kill her. You kill her. Yes, fuck. it's, it's so crazy because it's, by the way, he's in a wheelchair talking to fucking Pat Robinson on the 700 Club. And he's like, let me tell you, the Cup County, Georgia police really had it out for me. All I tried to do was brandish with a knife, pointing at her neck, saying, I'm going to cut her, her well, neck this with this thing. knife. Like, it's this so is the nuts. Thing. He. He's the most boring Matthews psychopath in I've ever met in my entire goddamn life. Where it's like, yeah, you're just a murdering, awful human being who yeah, lucked murderer, out on a uh, lucked out down, on an overdose. I still think they were down a. They were just both addicts, and then she yeah, they were fucking a, probably took as much as him, and she weighs like half as much as him. I agree with that entirely. What I still bugs me is that he still approaches talking about this period in his life with the same sort of tone of like, boys will be boys. Is he talking about like Bret Hart giving him coffee for the first time? And it's like, you're a gross man who's grifting these poor religious this people. Is the thing. Yeah, go this fuck yourself. This is what yourself. I want to say though. He becomes a Christian and get your hats on because we're about to, Dylan Gott, if you, if you go. fucking, if you fucking at all hate left wing shit, you're just about to hate this. He joined something that, A, helped him turn his life around, which, great. It's great that Lex Luger is still alive, but still, like, Christian values and shit, he joined a religion that reinforced his misogyny. So it's like, oh, you stopped doing drugs, which is great, but your worldview is still totally fine. Such a very good point. Exactly correct. And it's also one of those things where with these kind of guys, you can see, like, the Fed is many things. Um, and evil is sort of one of them, but more importantly, they're a bottom line. What's going to affect us? Get this fucking guy away from us, which is they have brought like Sean Waltman. I guarantee is, has some skeletons in his past. We do. You don't There's inject a lot so of dog. God bless that man. Um, to kill get a small dog. Don't, don't pray that Arabs die. Get a small dog. Yeah. Just get a small dog you know and just mean? get like, weirdly obsessed with it. Don't the Middle East. Just be like, I have to have this dog around all the time. That's, That's such a, a very decision. funny point. Exactly correct. Um, I would also say that it's also just very telling that the Fed has had nothing to do with this guy. Like in a, like they eventually reopened communication with Macho Man Randy Savage. Well, this is what Macho Man never did was full kill Elizabeth. Yeah, that's the thing is Ms. Elizabeth was never full murdered until Lex like, Luger. They were clearly down a, an abusive path. And like, obviously, you never want to speak to something you weren't there for. But in the lineage of what's happened with wrestlers and women and drugs, I think Vince McMahon is pretty safe with going. Yeah, I mean, it looks like they were just both drug addicts and one of them expired, but I'm not going to. No. stamp a fucking publicly traded company on the fact that and also lex luger is kind of the gun that starts the fucking everyone's dying in three years culminating with benoit or yeah he is yeah, that's very funny pistol. yeah he is the starter's pistol of like uh hope you guys all say goodbye to andrew martin which one is he well you'll find out soon
because Miss Miss Elizabeth was not young at all. Like you can you can be like, uh, I mean, she she's not just old. Just on television, she was just on television looking great, and now she's fucking dead. Yeah, that's the thing. Is and it's then like... Lex Luger comes in TNA, and I didn't I even remember this. This is so crazy. I had no idea he did this. Anyone. Like Lex Luger may have just should have just walked down the ring. I don't. I also chair and then took it out and. Sat, sat in the chair and then AJ Styles put himself through the table and then Lex Luger just eats a protein bar and he's like not burning my gains but doing cardio brah someone carry me out I uh yeah someone carry me out and also take me by Liz's grave I want to laugh at it I mean cry <laughs> Lex Luger I want to I want to have some fun I want to fuck, fuck that ground I guarantee that Lex Luger doesn't know his kids don't talk to him and his kids don't talk to him that's very funny I guarantee he he hey, like Brian hasn't reached out in a while I guess you forget. I guess you forgot it was Christmas. <laughs> I, like I guarantee. Like I like Lex Luger, Dylan. I hope you're sat down. I don't care for him. No, I'm standing up. I'm actually standing up, and I'm in a plane. Have you been doing this whole thing from a plane? Are you on the Concord Sorry, again? Because I pod. I was like the pod of a plane. That's why I was that podcast was. So I bought a plane. Oh yeah, that's. I forgot, guys. You, here's what you don't know about Dylan. Very wealthy. So, oh, the other thing about TNA is uh, he has his last match in 2012, and then, of course, he suffers uh, debilitating injuries that cause paralysis. And if you look at the timeline, he angered the Cobb County police, and Ray Trailer did that from heaven. Yep. He said, no, you must learn a lesson before you get the sweet release of death. That's what the big boss man did. Because and as always, the big boss man. If you do go down to Cobb County, Jordan. You certainly do. You, You're going to serve some what, Dylan? Hard time. That's and right. You know what Lex Luger didn't do? Serve hard time, so he served. No, he didn't respect that law and order. Goddamn right. He mocked the police in that interview. How long after that? Not long. You mocked the Cobb County police, who I assume are terrible, terrible people. Now that I'm talking about this, there is no way that they've been respectful in all matters. But here's the thing with Mm. them: they are featured in and are the home of one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. Not the greatest, one of, and that's real good. So we we stand by all their behaviors. Virgil. That's right. Actually, Big Boss Man was a prison guard, which probably just meant he was a drug dealer with a uniform. So good for him. Yeah, and also what was weird is um, I still per- I still enjoyed his my favorite iteration of the Big Boss Man, which is when he was just called the Boss, and he was the W C. He was the, on the WCW security team. That's hilarious. That is. It, we're trying to keep it secure. Maybe they're going towards that with Wardlow because Wardlow's friggin' feuding with security guards that'd be dope but wait yeah why is he feuding i don't understand what's because going they on they don't have any because tony khan runs nine companies and he has no ideas like he's clearly like gone crazy real fast aw here's what's interesting about aw and, then and we'll he close. also took he used to not book dark but then to be fair max caster who i do think is a great wrestler just made a ton of rape jokes and he's like well now i gotta book this too i have to edit everything now because the one program i didn't edit someone was like yeah 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 he's talking about raping <laughs> <laughs> do you know what's really funny is what tony khan needs is literally two producers he needs two he, what he needs is two guys that just he but- talks talks to every morning at about 8 30 and he's like here are the eight people i need you guys to go stop from being near a camera today is one of them Tully? Of course, one of them. I think he stole a camera. I think Tully has a camera somewhere. You need whatever he's shooting. We need to make sure uh, he does not. Whatever he Talk does to his daughter or explain to his film daughter. talking to his daughter. Hello, hello. What's your name you and why is it your George fault? George or Floyd no, don't even need to be connected. You cut the fucking feed, goddamn yeah, it. Yeah, whatever we you do, an Andy Griffith rerun if we have to. Yeah, we will. Whatever you do, just pull the fire alarm and also start a fire. Like, like well, why? It's like. So yeah. uh, all right, so he becomes a born again Christian. Uh, of course, Luger does in two thousand six. Are you ready for and... this? I think he's the biggest sham born again Christian in the history of wrestling, which is saying that's, something. That's okay. I don't think it's a sham because I think he's terrified and he wants he wants release. Really, he doesn't things. want punishment in after death, and I feel that's what he deserves mostly for his performance. Um, Post uh, WrestleMania ninety four. But I mean, Ro- there is a yeah different WrestleMania thing. ten. There is a different. Um, track in wrestling that we both know which is dynamite kid where he's like i'll say this i made some mistakes which is a word other people use because i think they're called fines they were yeah. all fine yeah so they're okay like you know he's a bad Again, guy still i would probably, like to say this though i cannot believe i have to draw this line but this is very important 
Dynamite Kid's behavior only led to him pulling a shotgun on a woman holding some children, while Lex Luger's behavior led to the death of a woman. And I say they're about the same. You are right. They're about the same. They're just both horrible I assholes. I still think, like, it's just, it's, it's, this is the other thing, uh, and then we got to get out of here, though. Oh, I will say this. WWE uh, had welcomed him back in 2011, but he was just working as part of the wellness policy because, you know, it looks good. You know, look, look, look at this yeah, guy. Yeah, I, I assume he was just kept in an office, and they're like, if you don't go to rehab, you're going to be this guy. And Lance, Luke's is just like, are you guys my kids? And then they're like, no, nah, <laughs> I'll go to rehab. Are you my daughter? This isn't even friend? the worst thing that could happen to you. Are you my friend? <laughs> no. Yeah. I don't no. have any friends. That's, That's right. And even like Ric Flair is like, yeah, he's good now. But whoa, that guy was a fucking asshole, which is crazy when it's and Ric whoa. Flair has his dick out. And it's I mean, women. I just want to say this. Like, and can then... you have a female pizza delivery lady? Because I need fucking someone. To hey, that. do you know the movie Big Sausage Pizza? I'll try to recreate that. So can you send over a lady to deliver my pizza? Uh, Mr. Flair, again, we are a McDonald's. We have not had pizza since the 90s. And no. I want to say this, though. Uh when people think about how addicts die who are artists, um, and I don't mean that if anyone here is struggling with addiction, obviously reach out for help if you feel like you need to. But the idea of what a lot of time is sold by certain like documentaries and stuff is like Janis Joplin dying at 27, and then you look at a piece of paper that she wrote out, and Stevie Nicks finds her body, and it just says the chain, and like, whoa, she was a genius. And like, but the reality is, you just die watching most likely America's Most Wanted at 9 p.m. Yeah, with some guy who's wearing a shirt they cut the sleeves off of that he got out of a beer case. Yeah, you, you. Oh my th- god. There's that's... no sex. There's no like sexy, cool, interesting. Like you, drugs and alcohol and shit don't make you interesting. You make you interesting. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dylan. As usual, he's nailed. PSA. It. Pretty sexy announcement. Whoa. You can use that. I don't that. know why I said that. <laughs> I agree you, with it, though. You're, uh, you're, you know, the you guys opening are... end of the, for the opening, uh, the first ever episode of the show opened with me talking about how I was messaging a, a bunch of busty Asians to try and get them to suck me off. And now I'm telling people don't do pills. So you know what we've done? We've grown. Listen. We've grown. Yeah. So now here are, the, here are the tenants of the rest review. Don't do pills. Mm. If busty Asian women want you to message them, message them. Also, you gotta message them because you can't just say, "Do you want me to message you?" Because that's, that's a right. weird open. That's that is a weird open. But if they've like, let's say you've run into if and it's okay, bu- Cupid, and you're like, yeah, it's context. Message them. If it's a person who's just living their life oh. and you you scream at them, "Can you message me?" I draw the line. You know who didn't draw the line? Lex Luger, and that's why he's a terrible piece of shit. Best thing about Lex Luger, he's in a wheelchair, and that makes me happy. Worst thing he ever existed at all. All right, Dylan. Ooh, I think the worst thing from a wrestling perspective that's not about his life is the total package. Changing his name to the total package and not Lex Luger seems like a weird WWE 2022 move where it's like, yeah, but we all true. know his name's fucking Lex Luger. Lex Luger, yeah, exactly. We all know. I, Best thing we, is the NWO stuff. Worst the way thing he was actually, using the NWO is perfect. Yeah, it burns his character completely. To Doesn't be matter. Honest, his character is completely done after that, and, uh, and everything else sucks that he does. But like that NWO <laughs> first chapter with Lex Luger is the best part of his career creatively. And I don't. I completely agree with you. I think it works completely. It's so fucking good. I want it. I want to. I want to. He poop. is like a. As it, his whole and I career want people is to like see it. a very it, from a booking perspective. And in the weird ways, he helped it along creatively just by being a, a dick in a weird way behind the scenes before he came like an actual bad person um, is a way to make a guy like him or Kane where it's like, here's a guy who's weirdly above your secondary title, wins your wins your main title, but loses it quickly, but still is like a guy you can go to once a year for a main feud and people don't piss all over it. Yeah. That's exactly it. Here's the guy that can do the feud with your champion the week after WrestleMania or Starcade. He's he's Mr. Backlash. Yes, he is. He's in more ways than one. Is he Mr. Backlash? (laughs) All right, that's it, guys. Thanks so much for listening. Wrestler Review on Patreon, uh, Patreon.com backslash Wrestler Review, Twitter and Instagram at Wrestler Review, and uh, you know what? Line up, shake our hands, kiss our feet. We'll kiss your feet. 
Also, I just want to say thank you to everyone who's joined the Patreon. Your support continues to amaze and astound yeah. us. Um, we are so doing a, a lot more uh, episodes where we just chat about the world of wrestling called chat episodes, and they're very fun. And just the world in general. And the world in general, all of that sort of stuff. So check all that out at patreon.com backslash the wrestler review. Um, or don't. Yeah, you can not do. It's a free world. And if yeah, you don't want I mean, to do that, just rate us five stars. And if uh, you're going to rate us less than five stars, don't fucking do that. It doesn't help by the way, anybody. I've done my every few months checking in on the comments. Let me tell you, a bunch of you have just uh, uh, gotten talking about how I wish it was more political. And I got to tell you, it makes me so happy. If you want a real a real smile on your face, the comment section of our podcast is very funny because you guys are just fucking with other people. And I got to tell you, I enjoy it. There's one yeah, in particular. I mean, I felt like weird about our rating until I looked at other podcasts that are just like, hey, maybe you should cool down on the sexual assault Hollywood. And they all have like 3.5 ratings because like these libtards don't think you should just grab them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. The um, there's a comedian who got into like a flame war with one with Anthony from Opie and Anthony after he left Opie and Anthony and started his crazy media company, which is like. Well, what if we just put what if we just bring back the Holocaust? Um, mm. And uh, uh, one guy was just like, I mean, that, I don't know how I can feel about that guy. I think that guy's racist. And that that guy sent his fans after one of his albums and one of his album reviews. It's the craziest. I think it's like you just the Joe Ro De Rosa. You deserve this. And it has like no stars and like 8000 ratings. That's great. That's the Amy Schumer thumbs up, thumbs down thing. That's how Netflix changed their whole algorithm because people were like, I don't like it. She's fat. Anyway, thank you so much for listening. That's right. Goodbye. Thank you so much for listening. Goodbye. Piss on me.